What's up guys, it's Jack from Dime Awake here, and in today's video, I'll be reviewing my boat board, the Hyperlite Baseline. But before we get into it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more content in the future. This is the second wakeboard I've ever owned. My first board was the Liquid Force FLX, and I use that as a cable board now. But before I bought the baseline, I rode it on the boat too, and honestly it was pretty bad, which is why I wanted to buy the baseline in the first place. I've been riding the baseline for a little over a year now, and I've gotten to understand it pretty well. It was designed by Sean Murray as a board to take riders through their first spins and inverts, which is the stage of wakeboarding I'm currently in. That's part of the reason I bought it over other wakeboards, and I'm very happy with my decision. The board has lots of specific features that make it unique. One of the most noticeable is how wide it is. For only being 141 centimeters, it has a surprising amount of surface area. This is to give you more pop off the wake and an easier landing. It's more board to send you up and more board for you to land on. It is made with a continuous rocker to keep the pop more consistent as you progress and learn new tricks. Another cool feature about the base is how simple it is. There are two little channels on the sides, but other than that, the bottom is flat. This gives you a direct connection with the water and makes the board more responsive. A downside to this is that there's no spine down the middle to make landings easier, but that only becomes an issue if you're landing in the flats. The board has 0.8 inch P-wing fins that are adjustable to make the board more slippery or more grippy. I've tried them both ways and I keep them on the more grippy setting because when I tried them placed more towards the center, they lost traction too easily, but that's just my preference. If you're more into surface tricks, you might keep them more slippery, but I keep mine farther out. Because the fins aren't molded, you can take them out and ride finless if you saw some butter you wanted to carve on, which in my opinion makes this board way better than Luke's Valhalla which has molded fins. The board has a variable edge that's soft in the middle and hardens near the tip and the tail, so it makes catching an edge harder to do, but it is definitely still possible. The board has regular binding holes and isn't anything fancy like the Liquid Force Flex Track, so it can take any binding basically. It's made out of triple layered fiberglass, which should make it last long. It's held up for the year I've used it with no issues, so I'm hoping to get a long life out of this board. Overall, it's a great board, and I would recommend it to anyone looking for a new board on the boat, especially someone looking to land their first spinner invert. Even after riding Luke's board in our video where we ride each other's boards, I still prefer mine and I'm very happy with it. If I were to buy another board after this one, the only one I'd buy is the Murray because it has a lot of the same features and basically is an upgraded baseline. If you guys liked this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below with videos you want to see us do in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.